right, so let's go into our virtual machine here um, that we have, and what we'll do is we'll go in to start and bring up the SQL Management Studio. This particular case, you can see the server name. We're going to use Windows Authentication here. So we're going to log in with the same administrator and the PAT um, that we used before. Okay. So you could set it up to use what's called mixed authentication instead of the, the Windows-based authentication, which would be like a, you know, security built into the SQL Server. Um, like an SA would be the actual username, and then you create a password. Um, but for our purposes right here, this is going to be where we're going to play a little bit. Hit. This is called SSMS, SQL Server Management Studio. And it's part of a suite of tools that really has evolved. Um, but this first iteration here with Windows 2008, uh, R2 specifically, started to get into what Microsoft dubbed as the business intelligence and data analytics. And now they've evolved to launching other products for ERPs um, like Dynamics and being able to put things into a data cube. And we'll talk a little bit about that here in a second. But in its rudimentary purpose here, in its rudimentary purpose, you have a cylinder over here, which in our particular case, this is called the Cyber Lab, if you look at that. And then over here, there's databases, security, server objects, replication management, and the SQL Server agent. If you just hit the plus arrow here on the databases, you can see inside of here, we have some databases that are underneath that. And then if we open one up here, the cars, for instance, you can see that you have diagrams, tables, and a bunch of other stuff. You hit tables underneath it. Now we're starting to see some things, okay? Hit something like the logins, and then you see that there's a columns tag. And then underneath the columns here, we have some interesting things like a UID, which has got this PK, which is not a penalty kick. It means primary key. And in this particular case, it says that it has to be an integer and it cannot be null. It has to have a value in it. This next one is username, varchar50. It can be null. Next one is PWD. What do you think that means? Password. Captain Obvious, right? Varchar 50, no. Okay? So um, that's just the way that typical data structures are, are, are put in. So inside of this virtual machine, what I want you to do is I want you to launch this Firefox right here. Okay? And then as you launch it, you sh what you should see is uh, the website starting to, to spin up. And as it's starting to spin up here, um, click on localhost and then um, let's just do localhost right here and there we go we got a little web hacking demo um, so we'll keep that up right here and then what I want to do is I want to actually open up Windows Explorer here okay and then over here in the computer for IIS Anywhere you go where IIS is installed, it installs in the root level this INET pub, this internet publication. And underneath that is this www root. And the www root conveniently is where the IIS web server serves up its magic. Okay? So lickety split here, what we're going to do, just to show you that you too can create a little bit of, of magic, what we're going to do is I just want you to go over here to start, go to notepad, and then in notepad, let's just type in HTML, HTML, do an H1, N1, no, no, that's something else. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Uh, and then underneath it here, we'll do a uh, look at that body. Mm -hmm. 
look at that body. Mm -hmm. that. No, no, that's something else as well. Um, this is the body of my website. Okay. So then go up here to File, do Save As. I'll give you a second to see if you can type that in. Um, and then, you know, as you navigate, let's go into INET Pub on the C, www, www root. And then here at the main level, go ahead and save it as your name .html. And then underneath it, before you hit save, do all files. Just save it all files, okay? And then click save. Everybody tracking? That's okay. All right. So then what we'll do is we'll go back over here to Firefox. And at the root level of all websites, typically is going to be the index.html, okay? So for our purposes here, if I was to just bring this back up, I can come into here and if I was to edit it, whether, whether it's with Notepad or Notepad++, I can look at this index.html and I can say for this particular one, it used to say Ben's web hacking demo, but now I'm going to save it. And then what I'll do is um, I'll say ignore selected updates and then come back over here, hit F5 for me here, and boom. What did you save uh, that, that uh, name? Okay, so I just I called it ben.html and you have to change it from text to all files. That's the trick. And then you see it's right here now. So what I should be able to do is because by default, any web server will load the index.html. That's going to be the, the main default page that is loaded when you go ahead and install the web server. Okay, it's the index.html. So at the root level, I just put this ben.html. And then what I'll do over here is I'll just come over here and I'll say ben.html. And then you see my website, my web page is now available on my website. Okay? And again, same thing goes here. Instead of hello world, I could say welcome to the machine. And basically hit F5 and booyah. So at its simplest level, structure of an IIS web server is INET pub www and index.html is going to be the first file that is by default created.